Welcome to anyone watching, it's Craig at mysimpit.co.uk and welcome to part 4 of the right console build. In this video we're going to take some time to look at the design of the right console frame. Let's buckle up. As a recap, in the last couple of videos we've looked at the initial design and development and production of some of the panels. And then in the last video we had a close up look at each of them, of which we can see at a glance now. The stage I'm at with the build of the right console is now to design the frame, which when built all of these panels will be mounted into. Originally, when I designed the left console, at that point, I was using SketchUp. At this point now, Fusion 360 tends to be my main go-to 3D CAD program. So my starting point will be to take the design of the left console from SketchUp, redraw that into Fusion, and that will be my point of reference from which I can develop the right console frame. So we'll start by building up the left console and initially it's made up of six pieces of MDF, all of which have been machined and these holes we can see are for the passage of all the wires and also reduces some of the weight of it. And with these six items of wood machined we then have a series of supports to hold them all together. Now with the left console the radio stack was quite a substantial panel in that and given its size it had its own base to hold it which also formed part of the overall support for the frame itself and then there was also a support for the HOTA throttle and then we can see that there's a number of grooves that have been cut into the wood and ultimately that's so that some aluminium strip can be cut and held in place in these and these form the mounting rails for all of the various panels. So this is effectively the whole of the left console design. The only other part to it was a skin was added which was 6mm MDF wood and as I said that formed a skin that ran all along the edges here and here. So that, if we move it to one side, is the point of reference to now build up and design the right one and again that will be made up of a series of in this case five pieces of MDF now one thing with the right console, the scale is more correct to the actual scale of the real A10C right console. The left one, some of the approach to the panels, particularly the radio stack, it was very free format. So in reality, that console ended up being about 380 millimetres longer than otherwise would be if it was exactly to scale. So this one initially will look shorter, although I will explain that there'll be something added at the end here. But with these key pieces of wood machined here, you've then got the supports to hold those in place. And much like before, we've got the same situation with the grooves cut into the wood for aluminium rail. This worked really well on the left console, so we'll use that same basis over again. Something that will be different on this one is, and, and really thinking uh, back to all the other ones I designed, that really they'd all be on caster wheels, so there's the ability to move them. But this is particularly important for the right console because that's one I might need to be able to easily move to one side to step into the sim pit. So let's go ahead and put these caster wheels in place. So there's a couple of wooden supports which they will be mounted into. So 
So I think the combination of this being a shorter console and therefore made up of less wood and with the wheels, it will be so much easier to move if, if needed. And then we're at the point that we can look at the skin being added and start to get a bit of an idea of what it would look like. Now one of the things we can do here with the right console is we can test fit all the panels that we built previously. So if I take away the skins at the side of this console and then we can zoom in and start to build up all the different panels. Let's just have a look. So first of all we've got countermeasures and this is particularly helpful where when we zoom in you can see just how tight some of these fit and it's really important that any adjustments can be made in advance so there's not later a, some kind of a struggle of, of marrying the two together. So countermeasures, caution panel, electric panel. And I did mention that one of the one of the few panels that's not yet designed will be the canopy panel. And that will be one that when this is physically built, I can then design this um, and just go ahead and install that there. And then let's go ahead and have a look at the other panels. So CDU, AAP. And some of these just take a moment to load in because this file with infusion is quite big. Tacan panel, oxygen regulator, environment panel. And again, quite straightforward in terms of the test fit. One thing that's interesting is that because the profile grades up at an angle here, it means particularly where the panels are quite long, you have to, I've, I've kind of built this extension out to the side here a good few millimetres. So as we can see where it's a quite a tight fit. I mean that actually passes over the support itself although it's within the skin of the outside but that's how tight the fit is. But at least I know in advance that this will ultimately fit. ILS panel and then some blanking plates. So to keep it in keeping with the A10 there are certain gaps that exist between the panels mm -hmm. and the blanking mm -hmm. plates. It could well be that at some point in the future, um, other panels will be installed there. Haas panel, another blank plate, an attendant panel, that's just for a bit of fun really. Another blanking plate, the recorder unit, the lighting panel. And actually we'll have a, we'll zoom in on those. And as I said before, the recorder unit's effectively just a placeholder. The lighting panel, although I've earmarked what I expect to be the typical footprint of it, at this point this one's not fully built. But by the time all of the various switches and toggles are in place, and then some of the rear lays with suspended backlighting, and then... Um, the Arduino that will drive it and some other bits I know that it will be of roughly this size and that will be a really key panel within the right console as well and one of the very last ones to go in because on this lower section here I'll most likely put in place some pieces of wood to create a floor within it and that will have in this area all of the various dimming units and power supplies and then the potentiometers here will feed their, their way all the way down into these so as the power comes in to the backlighting this panel will be able to control the degree of brightness. So let's go ahead now and add the outside skins on again and there we go. This is what we're now going to go and build. In terms of this gap here in the right console, I plan to install here a it'll be a bespoke master control panel for the lighting. 
And the reason is, is because you've got all of the standard lighting in the sim pitter, the left console, the right console, and then you've got um, the instrument clusters on the front dash, auxiliary instruments, and things like that. But I've also got a number of items about lighting that are additional, like I've got some extra controls on the left console here. I've got uh, some lighting within the hood, so they'll be controlled from here. But also, the when the sim pit is active and it's powered on, there'll be a power supply running in, which ultimately will feed all of the back lighting for the sim pit, and it will run to a number of dimmer units. And the lighting panel here will then feed into those dimmer units and dictate ultimately the level of, of brightness throughout the sim pit. But I like the idea that I can have a, a master switch for each item of the lighting so it's never as simple as it's always powered it's a bit like a kill switch which i've had for some of the rs485 networks that the dimming units can only can handle so much current and i'll spread the load very carefully but it just means that when the back lighting's off i'll be able to cut the power fully and then equally when i want them on i'll throw the power to it and then at that point i can use the lighting panel to control the brightness and what that brings us to is the final point of the difference in, in length. The height is effectively the same between the two consoles. The width is the same, but the length is greater on the left because the new right console is much more to scale. And we can see this difference between them highlighted in this view. Now what I plan to do is I want somewhere to store... Um, all of my flight documentation and manuals and things of that nature. So I'm going to build an extension to this bit here, which I'll just build that up now. And then what this unit will allow me to do is store all of my documentation. And it will bring them pretty much exactly in line with one another within a few millimetres. Also from the inside, just to make best use of the of the storage area I've got, I'll be able to pull this fascia off here and store some items inside as well. So I should be able to store a fair amount of resources and, and documentation in there. So that's the design of the right console. In the next video we'll look at the construction of this and then the installation of all of the panels into it. Thanks for watching.